All right, so this is really, really, really informal um, because I just found this actual um, folder and it has a presentation, basically, and I'm going to talk about the Compex, all right? What the Compex is, it's these, okay? Muscle stimulators, um, electronic muscle stimulators. This is the wireless one. Um, this is the performance and this is the Sport Elite. Basically, all they're doing is it's a TENS unit, it's a stimulator, um, it sends electricity to your muscles. I'm going to go through this presentation. I have not read it. Um, I don't know what it's going to say, but I decided to do this because I want to test my knowledge on the Compex while I explain it. So I'm kind of doing two things at once. All right. So, and I have no idea how long this is going to take. I'm just going to go through the whole thing. Okay, so if you have questions, ask uh, while we're in here. But um, so what the Compex is, it's a muscular muscu uh, muscle stimulator, all right? Basically, it sends electronic pulses, electricity, to the muscles that you have the electrode pads connected to, and it makes the muscle contract, all right? I want to say more, but um, it's all um, involuntary. All right, so basically, it's being sent without you even physically trying to contract the muscles. All right, um, it's upside down, but it says, um, what can you do with it? So there are the different settings. So it's talking about pre warm warm-up, potentiation. Um, this glare is killing me. All right, um, it has different settings, so we're gonna go through that. Let me turn it on. Here are the different things. So potentiation, um, what it has basically is increased blood flow, which is basically blood flow. It has endurance. The endurance setting is at a lower frequency. Um, the settings of the actual workout itself, I believe an hour or so. Um, it's got to be like five or ten seconds contraction. Um, and then a light recovery and then back into it again. I like that one. I'll do this one on my abs because I just, that's what I do, all right? Um, resistance and strength are very similar. So let's find the resistance piece if they have it on here so I can read it correctly. All right, so resistance, <clears throat> this program trains the type 2A fast twitch fibers. So literally, this machine will pinpoint the exact Type 2A fast twitch fibers. Um, when it comes to, it, I believe it's like um, quick workout. So it'll be a heavy load and then it'll recover and it'll have about 15 seconds or so break time. And from there, you'll have the strength. The strength is going to type, target the Type 2B fast, trip, fast twitch fibers. So it's also working on those, all right? But I believe that they're gonna target both, target both um, at the same time, so. And then you have your ex, um, explosive strength, which is gonna target your fast twips uh, type 2B, and also trains um, just the energy systems between it. This one, I like a lot, but it's a lot of downtime. Strength is what I do the most of, just get stronger and then I'll just couple that with either functional training or I'll just do the training separately and do those two together. So that's that part of it. Well, there's more options on here. Active recovery, it's basically just blood flow. Um, this one's really good. Now you can actually clear lactic acid within six minutes. Um, there are a lot of facts and a lot of um, results, I guess you can say, um, that, that prove this. But basically, it's very important that you can clear lactic acid. A lot of people like to do icing. What icing does is it actually, um, it just brings cool to the area. Then when it goes from cool back to your normal body temperature, it flushes that actual area. Well, this does it in six minutes, and it's at a very, very high rate. Recovery Plus, the same thing. It just fluctuates from the actual um, 
amount of wattage that's being sent to your body. Pre pre warm up <clears throat> pre warm up. Let me go ahead and just find what that one says. And there's some. There we go. Um, pre warm up. It's increased blood flow. Yeah, pretty much it. All right. So let's look at this actual individual stat. The recovery process. So you can increase the blood flow up to 600%, reduce lactic acid by 25%, so I had the number wrong. And then you can um, release endorphins because you feel good, all those things. And it's just a really good thing. Um, I got a lot of stories about this, but I'm going to try to stay consistent with this actual piece. Um, there's all the benefits of it. For me, you're going to get stronger, you're going to get faster because you're training the muscles correctly. All right, so how do you use the Compex? Sorry, this light is too much. All right, how high can you turn it up? Why adjust the channels individually? How often can you use it? And how can I fix the comp, um, fit the Compex into my training? I'm assuming it's gonna talk about those things so I can just answer those individually. All right, so how high can you turn it up? I'm gonna go ahead and explain it without reading that piece. So basically, the Compex goes to 999 on each individual level. So here's where you you would choose the exact piece part of your body going to be working on, right? So most people are going to be working the legs. Okay? It's going to it's not going to work right now cuz it's not attached to me. But there's individual levels. There we go. So there's 1 through 5. And basically, when you're level 1, it targets a certain percent of the fibers you're working on. If you get to level five, you're working on a higher percent of the um, muscle fibers you're working on. So each individual level has 999 as an option to, to crank up. Typically when I train, <clears throat> I'll get up to level maybe five um, and I get to like 80 or 100 for my legs. That's about it. If I put it on my core or lower back or my arms, it's, it's a lot different. But um, basically, I have yet to max this thing out because your muscles are contracting. So when they contract, if they're completely contracted at 75, you're not really going to want to turn it up to 100 because your muscle is going to freak out. All right. Um, but you turn it up basically to your tolerance. Whatever you can tolerate, that's good. But I always go about... 50 more higher than what I can tolerate. And each time I'm able to tolerate more, such as if it works for seven seconds on and seven seconds off, what I'll do is each time I feel my body be able to tolerate more, I'll crank it up higher um, from there. So sometimes I'll start at, let's just say 70, but I'll end at 245 because I'm able to tolerate more. Now the toler toleration basically is basically like lifting weights. When you're lifting weights, you're able to put more weight on each time. When it goes to lifting weights outside in the gym, you're not able to just throw more weight on it. You're actually gonna get weak, weaker each time. With this, you're able to go the opposite direction and get stronger. How often can you use it? All right, I'm gonna read what it says. You can use as much as often. Um, the great thing about it, where I say you can use it more, is um, you can always change the actual frequency, right? You know, if for me, if I'm gonna work my legs one day, I can put this onto my calves one day, I can work my quads one day, work the hamstrings one day. So I can usually, you literally use it multiple times within a specific section or um, session. So that's a huge piece. And it, I can also use it for recovery. So you can actually use this literally all day and every single day, all day. You can't do that same thing in the weight room. So why do you adjust the channels individually? Basically, let's just say I have this, these, um, the, the leads or whatever they're called. I have, let's say I have this, um, these two on my quads, and then this is going to be on my hamstring, let's just say, right? Well, when I'm doing my quads, my quads can handle more actual tension. I can go up higher. But then my hamstring, maybe they're not as strong. Or maybe I want to get them stronger, so I'm going to bring this higher than my actual quads. You want to be able to move each individual tension up individually because each body part is going to be 
weaker or stronger. For example, um, I had like a knee strain playing basketball to get myself back stronger. I had to really get my BMO back up to par. So I was able to have my quads and rectus femoris working, but to get my BMO really working, I just simply cranked up that piece. All right. Um, let's see. How often can you use the complex to build strength? For me, I feel that if you're targeting specific fibers, you can do whatever you want. So this says you want to give yourself a 48-hour recovery period for the muscle group train. I mean, they're saying that simply because they legally kind of have to. I'll actually work more often because think about it. When you're working and you're doing, let's say, CrossFit or general fitness, you know, you're going to do lunges one day, um, do legs one day, right? The next day, maybe you're doing a squat and press or, you know, um, you're running as the next day of your workout. Well, you did legs Monday, then Tuesday you're doing running workout where well, your legs are still working. So you don't really have to stick with this, but stick with this for your safety. Um, but if you feel more comfortable, you can always do more and go from there. So how fit, or how to fit my complex into my training. Um, for starters, if you purchase the complex, just sit down and use the complex, right? Later on, maybe you'll use the complex in your training, as in you'll do functional squats with the complex actually on. Crossfitters, I have seen that they'll actually do the weight training exercises with the complex on, which is going to really shred your muscles apart, but they're going to grow and get stronger and so on. So that's always good. Um, but again, when it comes to fitting into your training, you can use it however you want. I would train and I would go do whatever my workout was, and I would actually put the complex on to recover. I had a track meet where I actually had um, calf sleeves on, and I ended up going in between each jump, and I would put the complex on between each jump for two minutes, and I was able to keep my blood circulating. I actually had calf, calf cramps during competition, and I was able to jump through them because of that. Um, yeah. So should complex um, be phased or periodized? I mean, it's a fitness. It's, it's a general workout. So the answer is yes. They say five weeks. Again, you can do whatever you want. You can um, work on cycles. You can do just general training. Whatever you like, just make sure that whatever you're doing, it's safe and you're keeping your focus there. So these ones are the actual details you want to see. So the progressive levels versus work time. All right. So when you're doing the different workouts, such as resistance, endurance, explosive strength, the frequency changes, right? There's the um, construction time, which is like your actual work. And then you have your rest time. And then it also has the overall time of workload, the total time for it to do it. So this is what I mean, that it's, it's, um, the frequency is lower, right, when it comes to endurance. However, it's eight seconds of work two seconds off. Eight seconds on, two seconds off. So just think about doing squats or push-ups or lunges or whatever. That's a lot of work. And you're getting 40 minutes of actual work time in. I see a lot of people go to the gym. They do their reps and sets and they're working hard. But then when they finish their rep, they wait three to five minutes. Well, you're there for two hours and you only got in a 40 minute workout. How can you get a 40 minute workout done in 40 minutes? This is one version of it. So when it comes to resistance, you can see that the actual frequency increases. So it's um, seven seconds on, seven seconds off. When you change the actual level, it increases a second and the rest time decreases. decreases. All right, so, and then the workload, actually when it's resting goes up as well. So you can see this whole thing, it just changes. Um, the frequency changes, it ranges depending on where the poten potentiation and so on. Uh, you can see the duration also. But for me, I always work within strength, I'm sorry, with resistance. So the frequency is peaked out at 70 when I do that. And then, you know, the work time is there. The 
this is just a general breakdown of how you can use the Compex. Same thing. When you're working out, you can work out however you like. You're the one that can schedule those things. This is just good for the basics. Sometimes trainers say do legs on Monday, chest, you know, one day, Friday, you can do back. You can do the same concept when it comes to this overall um, training. Doing pretty good here, huh? All right. How to organize strength building into your training program. The same exact way you lift weights. For hypotrophy, you want to give yourself, you know, go through maximum um, lifts when it comes to weight. Give yourself a lot of rest and give yourself rest in between each set, but also in between each day you're working out. So if, if you're doing that one workout a week, as in chest on Mondays, legs on Wednesdays, then you're giving yourself seven days, not to only break down, but to also rebuild, okay? Um, this, let me give you a quick example. I'm gonna turn the camera around so you guys can see my face when I tell you this story. All right, so the Tour de France athletes, I heard you use the Compex. All right, and when they used the compacts, they put them on their quads on the bike, and they rode the bike for three minutes. So it was three minutes total time, but it was seven seconds on, seven seconds off, and they did the, the resistance or strength setting. And I decided I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna see what's up with that. So I tried that, but I did the whole actual workout itself, the 24 minute or 30 minute session. Then I decided I'm gonna try jumping i did jump squats i did lunges i did the plow press squat machine all those things and then the next day i wasn't sore and i knew doms would set in so i was like i'll be fine the next day i'll, I'll probably be sore for a, little, a week or so um the next day comes in still no soreness so i was like all right i'm actually i'm okay because i i did the recovery after that so i'm like i'll be fine and then all of a sudden by the fourth day I started feeling sore and my quad, my VMO, everything swelled up to where it sagged over my kneecap. You couldn't see my kneecap. I got so scared by, it was by then, but then it was the sixth, by the sixth day, um, I was freaking out because the soreness was getting worse. It kept getting worse. It wasn't getting better. And um, I talked to Rick Stasi, who was the one that introduced me to this actual piece. And the thing that was bad was I was freaking out, but six days after that so it was almost looking at what 11 days or so where i was whether either going up in soreness or going down and down in soreness um six days after that i finally subsided i was fine I was able to walk around jump all that stuff but the thing that happened is my threshold for fatigue pushed out the out the window I'm talking about i was able to do a hundred meters of lunges before I would feel a physical burn in my legs. So whenever I would train, I would be training and try to make myself get sore. So just really think about that piece of you're able to do lunges or push-ups or whatever muscle group you were trying to train. Imagine being able to do push-ups and not physically get tired without doing a hundred or, or whatever. So that piece really helped out. Um, but I, I wouldn't do it again, ever. I wouldn't. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right, uh, this is a pretty cool fact. 20 minutes of E-STEM equals to 160 squats. So that's probably why I was so sore. Because I did 20 minutes, actually 30, 40 minutes with the Compex on. So this is talking about sitting down 160. I probably did a million squats that day. All right, some of the results. Um, oh, it's just safer, safer. But one thing is, obviously, it's isolated. You know, if you want a full body workout, you're gonna have to really attach these to every piece of your body to get that workout in. First is you can do an overhead squat and tap in, into different muscle groups. So this is just showing where you can actually attach the actual complex on your neck, your shoulders. Um, your quads, hamstrings, VMOs, your calf, forearms, your bottom of your foot, arches, lats, right? Navigation, I already explained that before. And wow, that is it. I literally was able to explain the complex.
with never seeing this actual presentation before. And um, that's it. So if you guys have any questions about it, let me know. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be offering these at different at um, a 30% discount. Um, this isn't all of them, and this is the last generation. But um, so this is the Sport Elite. This one, I'm not going to try to sell you anything. I'm going to tell you the honest truth. This one you don't need unless you know this is exactly what you want. Okay, so it has, um, I believe it's 11 settings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine settings. All right, um, a lot of these are blood flow. Okay, the ones that I really enjoy the most are the Active Recovery Plus and the Endurance are the two that I like, but I do always do strength. I do strength every single day or every day now. This one, I don't know the cost anymore. When it first came out, it was $1,000. Um, now it's a lot cheaper. They made it more cost effective for you guys, and you get 30% off. And I'll put those information on my website or in the video description later, but it'll come up pretty soon. Okay, this one, I think, is the one that people need. It's going to be a lot cheaper than the uh, Performance Elite. This one, I think they changed from performance to the edge. Um, or I'm not sure the exact ones. You can look it up online. But um, basically, it has endurance, resistance, and active recovery. So the ones that I feel like most people need are in here. This is the better, this is the better one when it comes to just using it every single day and going to work and getting it done. This one is just a luxury version of it. Now, this one, the bad boy, this one's really sleek. It's wireless. So as you can see, the, these cords attach to electrode pads, right? Um, and that's where the electricity is sent. This one is wireless. So there's a lot of other settings. I just keep it simple. So there's resistance. And you go to resistance, you choose your body part that it works on. So it changes the actual frequency. But the resistance, recovery from competition, it's a higher um, frequency, lower frequency, Endurance, same things, right? Um, but what, what happens is this sends the information to your actual cords, which are here. Right? There's each side of the actual cord. So like you put that in your quad, right? The BMO on the quad and, and do all that stuff. I like this. It's sleek. I like that it doesn't have any cords. It's not going to get caught up and stuff. If I put this on my legs and I'm walking around, the problem with it that I deal with is these cords get caught into stuff. Like if I'm at the gym, like where I'm at right now, right? It gets caught on the stuff and then this thing pulls out and it, it sucks. It's irritating. Um, but the good thing with this is that it's wireless. You put this on your leg or on your shirt or whatever you walk around. This goes in your pocket. You're set. The part that I don't like is when you run around, these things are heavy. They're not heavy as in like really, really heavy. They're probably a couple ounces. But a couple ounces tugging on this, right? I can't even grab it. But tugging on this, it's going to fall off. So once these pads are used more than once, they start to get a little less sticky. When they're less sticky, this becomes heavier and all of a sudden falls off. So when it comes to just general living life, you know, have a seat, put the compacts on. This is good. When it first came out, it was like 1200 1400 Now I'm not sure how much it is. Um, this one's cool to have. If money isn't an object, go here. If you're on a budget, here. If you're balling on a budget, you want to go here. I'm pretty sure they had different colors now. They think there's green, there's white, and so on. But um, I like them. The reason why I have so many is... Uh, I was sponsored with them, and now I'm working back into it because, uh, man, every single athlete needs these. Now, let's say you're not an athlete. Why would you need this? Well, a lot of people have been having injuries. Let me go to my face again so you can see my face. A lot of people have injuries, right? And let's just say one of my friends, he, had a, um, he tore his ACL, MCL, and he needed to go through surgery. Well, he didn't use his leg at all because he had an injury, right? You can still operate without your ACL, MCL. Um, it's just a lot harder to, right? So he's living life for 
two or three months waiting for his surgery day to come up. Well, he could have been using the Compex that whole time, firing his muscles. So then when he goes back into um, rehab, the muscles have been worked. Now, you can use the Compex on your quads and get the same contraction you would as if you're doing squats, just sitting down. Well, you don't have that joint working. So now you're able to get the same amount of work or even more without having to physically do squats, which is really, really huge. Also, um, Rick Stasi just had a whole complete knee replacement. And his swelling went from basically bad to really good. He's, he was two weeks post um, operation and walking on it. And the swelling was significantly down. And I don't mean just like a little bit, I mean a lot. So I'll post a video um, later about that and you'll be able to see it. But, um, but it goes for every type of injury. If you have any injuries, it has that piece. Now the Compex, the new generation, has added in the TENS frequency, the TENS unit um, within it, the TENS option. So now it's actually Dr. Grade, I guess that'll be Dr. Grade, to where um, it's, it's safe and you're gonna be seeing these in hospitals. It's just so frustrating that we're just starting to see this now. Um, we're just getting this. Like I've been using this since 2010. So in 2010 track and field season, I only used the Compex for my weight training. I only used it for recovery. I did not do any weight training at all. Um, I had the most densest legs. I had a 40 inch vert. I placed 13th in the US for triple jump without any weight training. And I was stronger than I had ever been before in my life, just from this. Um, it's hard to go from you have to lift weights to a machine when you have done it this way all your life. But um, what, I'm, what I did this video for is to have you guys check this out, do your research, um, test it out. It is not just a TENS unit. It's not. It's for strength training. There are a lot of other ones that are copying Compex and they're copying them because they're doing recovery. They look similar, but they don't have the options that this has. It's going to literally target the muscles you're trying to work. There's one more moving piece that is huge. Um, Rick Stasi can validate this. He'll probably, I'll probably have him live next time he's here to talk about it. But um, there was a woman that was dealing with, um, she had a stroke. And obviously she wasn't able, she was diagnosed paralyzed on her, her left side, couldn't walk. 30, 30 years, right? And she ended up um, going through a bunch of different orthos and they pretty much said the same thing. We don't know how to get the brain to connect. The neural system isn't responding when it comes to movement. Um, that is what it is, you know. One of them called Rick Stasi and said, can we use the Compex? Can we try it? They put it on. I don't know how many days it was until, but she literally was able to walk again. She was, she was able to walk again after 30 years of not walking and being paralyzed. Um, I will also send that video. You know what, those videos, I'll post them right now after I finish this live. I'll post that onto um, my Facebook page. Yeah, my Facebook page. So go visit my Facebook page and like because I don't have any likers on there. But um, that was huge. And now that they're in the, that industry, I want to just be able to help you guys improve. Um, if you're not an athlete at all, put it on massage, put it on your back and travel. Whenever you fly anywhere, my back always causes issues. I just pop this on, let the blood flow go so that trip from... Cali to New York is better. So if you have any questions, shoot me an email at info at canyonbreaks.com. Um, for those who are track related, for those who are on my page who follow me for track, this is more beneficial than weight training. However, I'm a fan of using both because you need some of the biomechanical um, motions, the motor skills, all those things need to start coming into play. But um, Overall, if you don't have this, you're in trouble. If you have this and you don't use it for strength and you only use it for recovery, you can use it between each individual run, you can use it between each individual practice, 
Um, for college athletes, you're doing weights in the morning, you're doing practice, or you're doing practice and doing the weights. You need to use this. This is the thing that every single person needs to have, and that's, that's my word. So, Okay, uh, i got to go to the next practice. I'll see you guys next time. Info at KenyanBriggs.com if you have any questions. Yep. Bye. How do you close it out?